the chat if you would like to introduce yourself. Um, that would be wonderful with your name, pronouns, title, and department, and one to three words on what the Pride Festival means to you. Um, and again, this is a reminder that this is going to be recorded to share out with other volunteers who are unable to attend. And I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you who signed up to help out and volunteer in the Health Partners booth. Um, it is greatly appreciated. I'm looking forward to um, meeting all of you. So to get started, um, celebrating Pride Month, um, Health Partners as a whole, we celebrate our LGBTQ plus patients, members, and colleagues while acknowledging inequities still exist in healthcare and beyond. And um, just some of what you um, will have seen happening this month on my partner um, and our social media channels. Um, you'll hear from three of our colleagues um, about their personal journeys, um, highlighting our gender order services team, information for leaders on how to support employees with internal resources and celebration ideas. Um, We've been participating in the Pride Festival in March with nearly 150 colleagues volunteering this year um, and other supporting messages in clinics, social media, as well as resources. Um, again, um, please put your name, pronouns, title, and department, and one to three words on what Pride, the Pride Festival means to you in the chat. Um, the agenda for today, we have a very full agenda, so it's gonna be a little bit of fast and furious, but I will be sending out a recording along with these slides in the confirmation email um, for the booth this coming weekend. So the 2024 Twin Cities Pride Festival theme this year is Show Your Colors 365. Um, so from the website, uh, from Twin Cities Pride website, the month of June has always been a month to celebrate the LGBTQ plus er, community. We believe we shouldn't just show our colors in June, but show them 365 days a year. Um, so Twin Cities Pride is, to, is committed to making Pride shine 365 days a year. So um, the Pride Planning Committee uh, brainstormed some ideas on how Health Partners shows its Pride 365. Um, so it's just a very long list, but some of them are our LGBTQ plus colleague resource group, gender services, pronouns, pre preferred names, gender neutral bathrooms, wearing pride shirts, um, leaders engaging with our colleague resource group, um, sponsoring local LGBTQ plus affiliated organizations, and um, like I said, a few others. So getting to our booth um, and uh, the location of our booth and parking, Please plan extra time for travel, parking, and walking to our booths. Um, plan to leave about 30 extra minutes um, to get to the booth. Um, it is in Loring Park in Minneapolis. The Health Partners Park Nicollet booth is number 365 this year, so it's really kind of cool. It matches the theme as well. Um, so I think Lincoln's going to be putting a chat in the chat, uh, the link to the map. So if you type in Health Partners or type in 365, um, the Health Partners booth should show up. Um, but the star on the map, the purple star, that's right where we're located, um, the north side of that lower lake um, in that yellow section. That is the same location as it has been the past two decades if you have volunteered in the booth with us before. Um, Metro provides free and safe rides. Um, I don't think the link is working for the free pass ride pass, so I will send that to you in the link uh, in the confirmation email. Um, but there is bicycle parking in the purple section, and their accessible accessible information is coming soon to their website. So definitely check their website for the most up to date information. Um, there is various parking around downtown, but I highly recommend if you can um, getting dropped off and picked up um, for easiest convenience. It is very busy downtown. Um, I also heard the um, gymnastics summer trials are happening downtown as well. So just please allow extra time because um, you physically can't drive into the park either. So there will be um, a decent amount of walking to our booth. 
What to wear and bring. This is a rain or shine event. Please dress appropriately for the weather. And remember, we are representing our organization and should represent our best self. Best self. Um, T-shirts will be provided and distributed at the booth. Um, so the purple shirt is what you will be receiving when you show up for your shift. Um, please do not alter or modify that shirt. Um, we will have sticky badges, name badges that you can create with your name, first name and pronouns if you would prefer. Um, you can bring or wear your own pride or rainbow gear as optional, um, comfortable walking shoes, sunscreen and sunglasses, um, and then bring a water bottle and water to the booth. Um, safety information, um, the TC Pride, um, you can text TC Pride to 333111 to sign up for important alerts from the Pride Health and Safety Team. Um, that will give you the most up-to-date information. Um, if you uh, see something, say something. There is that number as well. Otherwise, 911 um, for emergencies. There are two first aid booths, one at the West End in purple and one at the East End in green. Um, sometimes we do get people at the booth asking for first aid, so sending them in the right direction. Um, yes. um, what is at our booth? We will have a spinner wheel. The answers to the spinner wheel questions will be in the booth. Um, so um, I will also attach them to the email so you can get familiar with the questions. Um, there will be hand sanitizer and sunscreen in big jugs. People can help themselves to those. Um, and then there will be um, prizes. There will be toothbrushes and toothpaste, band-aids, and then I believe sunglasses. Um, so one item, so have them spin the wheel or engage in the booth and they can take one prize item. The toothbrushes and toothpaste though go together. They can have both of those as a prize. They just can't have like those plus a band-aid and a sunglasses. Um, there also will be gender services and recruitment flyers. Um, as well as information for commonly asked questions that will be in the booth. Um, so if you have any questions, there will be a binder that you can uh, reference. Hey, Taylor, uh, looks like Dawn has a question in the chat. Is the bicycle parking monitored or can I have my bike with me? I'm not that sure. A great question. I can reach out and um, ask them. Marina, would you take note of that for me? Mm -hmm. And then I, um, I can it. reach out to Pride right away. Thank you. Have an answer for you. Thank you for that question. Um, so opening and closing shift. Um, so the typical layout is we have two pull-up banners in the back of the booth that are behind our back table. So that um, this purple bar here is the back table. There's um, storage of excess supplies and ec extra. Um, giveaways um, things are set aside for saturday and sunday so please if you're on a saturday shift and refilling in the booth do not touch the sunday items and vice versa um, on the front table there will be a spinner wheel three giveaway baskets hand sanitizer pump sunscreen pump and then acrylic sign holders about gender services and recruitment for people to scan a qr code um, and then again only use giveaways labeled for saturday we aren't able to bring in additional stock into the festival. The goal is to keep things dry, so keeping things under the table and wrapped up in tarps, especially if it is rainy, um, and you can zip, zip the tent walls down or halfway down to allow a breeze to go through if it is really windy. Um, we will have staff in the booth to kind of help with that as well. Um, so as a volunteer um, in the ambassador role, um, the overall message we want to send is that healthcare belongs to everyone. We support the LGBTQ plus community 365 days a year, and everyone is worthy of access to simple and affordable healthcare. So what you do at the booth, you will welcome folks. You will encourage them to spin the wheel for a prize. You can share a fun back fact about HP that's in the FAQ in the binder that will be in the booth. Just have fun, get to know people, meet people. Um, and then answer questions within your area of expertise. If you don't have an answer or anyone in the booth has an answer, please ask if you may take their name and numbers or email so that someone may follow up with them. There will be sticky notes in that volunteer binder. 
um, feel free to write that information down and we will get them um, in contact with someone that can give them the right answer. Um, and you know, it is okay if you don't know. Um, so just making sure that you feel comfortable with the answer you are giving. Um, so some big talking points. Um, the goal is we want the LGBTQ com uh, LGBTQ plus community to know we are a strong partner and that we want to work. We want people to know we are a great place to work. Um, so every year we have to submit an application. So some of the highlights from the application that we mentioned um, were that we are, we were one of the first healthcare systems in the Midwest to provide gender care and we're continually improving our care and support for the LGBTQ plus community. In 2023, we sponsored the Twin Cities Quorum Coming Out Day Luncheon. Last month, we sponsored the PFUN Moxie Awards. In the last few years, we've introduced, introduced new options for patients and members to specify their sexual and gender identity information. Gathering and using someone's name, pronouns, and gender identity helps us make healthcare more equitable and improve the patient experience. And most recently, we, we began implementing pronouns onto colleague badges. Also, we expanded available genders into our new ERP platform for human, service, human resources for our recruiting system. We include transgender male, transgender female, and non-binary. So some helpful resources to provide um, if you receive questions in the booth. Um, we have member services, individual sales, Medicare, care line, baby line, clinician finder team, and gender services team. All of these numbers will be in the booth, um, so feel free to share them um, depending on the question. But then again, just a reminder, answer questions within your area of expertise. If you don't know, um, please take down their name, number, or email um, so someone may follow up. So the big part is how to answer some questions. Um, these are the frequently asked questions that we get, which will be in the binder as well. But how can I update my preferred name, gender identity, pronouns, or other related information in my record? Um, the easiest way is the myhealthpartners.com on the account. Um, they can also ask their care teams. Um, how can I update my legal name or legal sex in my record? Legal documentation is required. Patients can bring documentation to their next visit. And then how do I make an appointment with an LGBTQ plus friendly provider? All of our providers treat LGBTQ plus individuals, but to find those with a particular interest, they can search LGBTQ at healthpartners.com. Um, otherwise, there is a phone number that they can call for extra help in finding a provider. Um, Gender Services Department also provides a complete range of healthcare services to trans men, trans women, and people who are non-binary, a gender, or questioning their gender identity, and they can contact the Gender Services team or at healthpartners.com. Some more frequently asked questions. Um, if I am a minor, may I update my gender identity information without my parents seeing it? Um, anyone can have their preferred name, gender identity, or pronouns updated. If a preferred name is entered in a record, it will be viewable on myhealthpartners.com account and used by care teams to communicate with patients. If the individual is under the age of 13, all information is available to parents and parents may be asked to verify changes. For individuals between the age of 17 to 13 to 17, parents would be able to see the information if the parent has proxy access to see all of the teen's account. Teens are able to create their own accounts, but creation of a teen account does require parental consent and parents may still have limited access to see the information in their teen's account. What does Health Partners do to support LGBTQ health equity? Um, the LGBTQ health equity steering committee works to continuously improve the organization's training, resources, and computer systems to support our LGBTQ plus patients. They also track patient feedback and health outcomes to make improvements for LGBTQ plus patients. And the gender services team serves as a resource for quality and experience issues in gender affirming care in the organization. And the last bit of frequently asked questions is, um, what does health partners do to support their LGBTQ plus employees? 
Um, Health Partners has a strong diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging department that works to ensure a diverse, inclusive, and equitable lens is used when making decisions, creating policies, and developing procedures. Um, and the LGBTQ plus colleague resource group works to create a safe and supportive space for LGBTQ plus employees through building relationships, offering professional development opportunities, and acting as a resource for our colleagues. And the last frequently asked question is, what does Health Partners do to support LGBTQ plus community and gender? Um, Health Partners has a long standing tradition of representing um, at the Pride March and at the park. Uh, I believe we're in our 26th year. Um, so we sometimes we get asked that question, how many years? Um, it is 26 years. And in 2023, we received Lavender Magazine's Community Pride Corporation Award. We know that is not enough and continue to strive to support and show up for the LGBTQ plus community on an ongoing basis. Um, and some final thoughts. So see the volunteer booth sign up for your shift information and look for an email from me or the community relations email today um, regarding information. Um, should have the recording of this along with everything you need to know um, for the booth on Saturday or Sunday. Um, so keep an eye out for that, but you can always consult the Sign Up Genius to uh, double check your shift information. And um, now we are done. I know that was fast and furious, but I wanted to try to allow for some time for um, questions if people had any um, regarding booth experience, travel, getting there, um, any of that. Um, when we get there, do we just say that that we're here to volunteer or do we need to purchase um, like any sort of admission ticket? Great question. It is free. Um, Twin Cities Pride Festival is the largest free festival in the world. They're expecting 550,000 people between the um, Friday or excuse me, Saturday and Sunday and the March. So we should have quite a bit of traffic, but it is free. So um, there are multiple ways to get into Loring Park, um, but it is free. Um, when you show up at the booth, there will be a staff, um, which I will include in the email who your contact will be. They will kind of show you the binder, show you if you want to add, um, do a sticky badge with your name and pronouns, and then you will get your t-shirt and have time to go change. You feel free to bring food and snacks. Um, I do try to stay away from like those nut allergies just in case you interact with someone. You do move very quickly, but feel free to bring your own snacks and water, especially if it's going to be warm. Is there anything specific those of us on um, the end of day shifts need to know about closing down the boot down the booth? Um, nope, I will be there to help out with the closing shift. So um, it's just comfortable. We might be like moving boxes just a little bit. It uh, should be nothing too, um, nothing too wild. So sweet. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, John, you have a question. Um, so I haven't looked that far ahead in terms of the weather, but I know last year it was very, very windy to mm -hmm. the point we had trouble like holding down the booth. Mm -hmm. Do we have anything in place to help mitigate that this year if it comes up or just kind of do the best we can? Um, I believe this year we are planning on doing, um, I know last year it was just staked, but I believe we are also planning on having uh, tent weights as well on the corners. Um, if something were to happen to the tent, um, I have a, you can contact me and I can contact our team to get a new one out there. Um, but kind of adjusting the um, tent walls can definitely help with some of that wind. I was looking at the weather today and it looks like it's supposed to be sunny, partly cloudy um, on both Saturday and Sunday. It looks like maybe a little rain for set up on Friday, but um, cross our fingers that hopefully the weather cooperates this year. All right, sounds good.
Um, just want to say thank you to Taylor for putting this together. This is the first year that we've had this orientation, and I think it, it's giving a, everyone that volunteers a lot of value in what to expect. Um, and I, I would also throw in there, if I know a handful of you have done this in the past, so if there's any um, memories you guys have of what you uh, – of what you experience that you want to share, you can throw it on the chat or just chime in. Um, but all in all, in all, this is usually a really fun event. We usually get a lot of people saying like, "Oh, you're my clinic," or "You're this." You know, it's very, very uplifting and fun couple of days. So I think you're all going to have a wonderful time. So for those of you that are volunteering at the booth on Saturday and might have Sunday free and are interested in in participating in the parade, we will. Be sending out to all the parade volunteers because there was a separate sign up for the parade. Um, we'll send to all the parade volunteers later this afternoon all of the instructions of what time to meet, what to wear, how to show up, um, and the details of where to meet, et cetera. But again, sometimes the day of the parade, we get a couple of cancellations. So we do have a few people that like to just walk on as well, which is fine. And that is Sunday. We meet. We start meeting at nine fifteen. We have to be in place one hundred percent by by ten. We usually take a team photo, and then the parade actually starts at eleven. And like Taylor said, parking will be tricky this year due to the fact that the Olympic Summer Gymnastic Trials are also happening this weekend at the Convention Center in downtown Minneapolis. So very close proximity to Everything Pride. If we get any good pictures of our booth, is there mm -hmm. a place you want us to send them? You're actually going to be sending them to Marina. Um, if you forget, um, you can always text them to me and I can send them to her as well. Um, but definitely, if you want to take a photo of you and the other volunteer at the start of your shift, um, that can be a lot of fun too, just to kind of see uh, people's outfits and our volunteers. So that would be great. And I believe uh, Lincoln is going to be putting my phone number in the chat for you if you have any questions. Otherwise, my phone number will also be at the booth um, should anything arise uh, the day of your shift. Okay, then we got another question that just popped in as mm -hmm. well from Jeanette. Um, just want, thinking that we should have um, more details on where to change your name and pronouns just so it's a little clearer instead of just our website. If you want to add those details to the facts, to the book. Yep, I can do that. Thank you, Jeanette. One related to that, and also whether it can be done in the app or if you have to go online mm -hmm. on the computer. I'm not seeing it in the app right now. I'm not super familiar with the app personally. Um, Taylor, we can offline this. I think yep. Jesse is a little familiar with the app um, that we can talk to him but yeah I, I'm, I'm sorry I'm, I'm pretty novice with the app I don't use it all that often so we can talk to someone and see because it would be nice if we could if someone does come up and they are antsy to do it being able to do it on the app would be really great yeah great question and we will have an answer whether it's included in the email or um, in the binder uh, the day of the booth and so we'll work on that, Taylor. We can offline that, and then we'll get back to the team. Um, we do have another question from Dawn asking if we can give out info on creating a My Chart account. Um, Dawn, yes, verbally. Uh, they the TC Pride really discourages us discourages us from doing anything paper related, just for sustainability. Um, you know, and it can get windy, things blow around. So um, just overall, you know, we're trying to avoid litter um but we can definitely direct them to a website that's usually always the preferred method is uh you know hop up on your phone rather than give a piece of paper anything to add to that taylor nope um just to kind of piggyback off that um pride does pride themselves in like that um no trash or very little um so just make sure you're cleaning up after yourself or if you see something someone opened something in the booth and there's wrappers laying around um, or it's the end of your shift and there's stuff has blown in front of ours. If you would be so kind as just throw it in the nearest trash um, or recycling, that would be great just to kind of keep our booth clean. Um, yeah. uh, and Jeanette has another question about QR codes. Yep, we do actually have a couple QR codes on um, eight and a half by 11 flyers. 
just to keep things uh, pretty high level and not, you know, having a QR code to a lot of things. We just have the few that are there. But in general, a lot of the websites are out there. Um, so we can just direct people to that um, in, the case, in that case. Um, Marilyn, I'm going to let you offline this one. Tia has a question about the walk. I'll let you reply. Um, Jessica, what are we giving out at the booth? I think that was on a prior slide. If you want to pull that yep. up, Taylor. It is toothbrushes and toothpaste. So those go together, sunglasses and band-aids. And again, they are set aside for Saturday quantities and Sunday quantities. So we really try to stick to that one item. And we know questions may come up after this. Feel free to mm -hmm. reply, you know, in this chat or you can email mm -hmm. Taylor, myself directly. We can help you. Uh, Taylor's probably a little more informed, but um, I can help a lot of, on the logistics side of things. Absolutely. Um, Yeah, most of the booth conversations are going to be very fast paced. They answer a spinner wheel question, grab a giveaway, and then they're on their way. There's usually a line at the spinner wheel. Um, that's okay. Some people don't want to, but if they engage with you, feel free to, they can grab a prize. Um, and like I said, there's sunscreen, hand sanitizer. Some people are like, oh, I totally forgot my sunscreen. They run up and quickly put it on. So. Awesome. Well, like Marina said, if there's any other questions, feel free to respond in the chat um, and we can get uh, back to you. Otherwise, you can email me with any questions. Um, stay tuned for the confirmation email from me um, that will have the majority of information as a reminder if people were unable to attend today um, or as a reference. Well, if no one has any other questions, thank you again for signing up to participate and volunteer at the Health Partners booth. We greatly appreciate it. Like I said, 26 years going strong, so it's very exciting for us. Um, but feel free to hop off. Let us know if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Taylor. Taylor. Thanks, Tyler.